Welcome to Roman Military Equipment. The strength of Rome was directly dependent on its military supremacy and fundamentally militaristic society. Regular citizens, comprised mostly of farmers and herders, joined to protect their land and families. In return for their service, members of this civic army were allowed to vote. Trained to be highly disciplined and obedient to superior officers, citizen soldiers developed a deep sense of loyalty to their city. The quality of the armor of a Roman foot soldier was intrinsically linked to his social status and wealth. Chain mail was the most commonly used type of armor. Scale armor, made famous in today's media, came into use after Caesar's time. Foot soldiers carried large and oblong shields, while the cavalry used smaller ones of Greek origin. Soldiers were expected to carry their own kit, including the tools required for the construction of forts and tents. Roman soldiers used the same types of weapons. The stomach and face were the most targeted parts of the body. As such, a legionary was equipped with two close combat weapons, a dagger and a short sword, known as a gladius. One of the most ingenious Roman weapons was the javelin. Its pyramid-shaped tip pierced the body, while its iron shank was designed to break upon impact, stopping the enemy from throwing it back. During their conquests, the Romans regularly transformed enemy technologies to add to their own formidable arsenal. After capturing a Carthaginian vessel, the Romans adopted its better features and constructed a superior fleet of ships. Adapting heavy artillery designs from Greek models aided the Romans in building catapults and ballistae. The latter became an iconic symbol of Roman warfare. Welcome to Roman Forts. The size of a Roman military camp, known as a castrum, varied significantly depending on how many soldiers it needed to accommodate. However, they all shared common characteristics in design and construction, such as this fort before you, located in Cape Chersonesos. Rectangular in shape, the forts were heavily fortified by ramparts and a ditch system. The walls were reinforced with parapets, essentially an extension at the roof line which allowed a protective barrier for patrolling soldiers. Depending on the availability of materials, some forts were built with stone, timbers, stacked turf, and particularly in the eastern part of the empire, baked brick. Access doors on all four sides were each flanked by guard towers. The commanding officer was positioned in the middle of the camp, giving him a clear view of the troops and the main gate. Along with sleeping barracks for the soldiers, the fort also had a granary that was expected to hold rations for a year or longer. To ensure the health of the soldiers, every camp was equipped with medical staff and a hospital. A clean water supply with conduits for a bathhouse and latrines was included in the construction of every fort. Welcome to the Forts of Cyrenaica. Cyrenaica was a Libyan region under Roman control, gifted to Rome by one of Cleopatra's ancestors. The remains and foundations of ancient fortifications 
were discovered in the 19th century in the southwest of Cyrenaica, as well as a Roman garrison dating back to the first century CE. Evidence shows that these forts were of Libyan origin, rebuilt and modified by Roman engineers when Cyrenaica was part of the empire. Stone was the most commonly used material to build forts in Egypt and Cyrenaica. Though no real proof of a fortress similar to the one before you has been uncovered in that region, the team chose to add it as a worthy and awe-inspiring end-of-game challenge for the player. The forts of Cyrenaica were intended to prevent invaders from gaining access to the main route that led to the country's five most important cities. These forts were built close to coastal plains and deserts for added defense. Three of these cities were recreated by the team, Balagre, Apollonia, and Cyrene. Had it existed, the fort before you would have protected the road leading to Balagre. Other than reference to an attack around 404 CE and a military reorganization by Emperor Justinian during the 6th century CE, we still know little of the Roman military presence in Cyrenaica. Welcome to Roman Aqueducts. Water management was taken seriously by the Romans. Cyrenaica benefited greatly from Roman administration with the construction of aqueducts and canals. The source of water varied depending on the location. Many aqueducts were built at the foot of the mountains, offering greater flow from the melting snow. The ability to transport water over a greater distance increased agricultural production. Some aqueducts were reported to be over seven kilometers in length. Where the Greeks of Libya originally focused mainly on olive trees and figs, which required less water, the advent of Roman aqueducts allowed for a far greater crop diversity. Every farm's water use was carefully scheduled. The engineering methods used to create aqueducts were constantly reviewed with a clear focus on exploiting the local environment. Materials, water usage, cleaning regulations, and a deep understanding of how to exploit gravity itself were all important concerns. Several fortresses were built to protect the aqueducts, basins, and cisterns. Additional water was collected with wells and cisterns, but aqueducts were the main supply of fresh water. The water was distributed based on the collective needs of the city before the private needs of an individual. <laughs> Almost all aqueducts ended in a fountain where the water circulated to clean the streets and supply bathhouses and latrines thus improving the cleanliness of Cyrenaica's cities. Whoa, whoa. Welcome to Crucifixion. In terms of the severity of Roman justice, Crucifixion was at the top of the list of corporal punishment, followed by death by fire and decapitation. The upper class considered crucifixion unworthy of their position. Those lucky enough to have Roman citizenship were also exempt from such treatment. Easily accessible, crucifixions were popular entertainment among the citizenry. Unlike throwing victims to wild animals, which required an arena, crucifixions did not require any particular setting. Whoa. 
Those subjected to crucifixion were almost always slaves, traitors, and lower class citizens. Roman deserters were crucified because the betrayal of the soldiers was perceived as endangering the lives of Roman citizens. In 71 BCE, a major slave uprising in Italia was repressed by the Roman army. This resulted in the crucifixion of 6,000 men, including their leader, a slave and former gladiator known as Spartacus. Thank you. 